In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. So in this first step we're going to enable MPLS on the core network. I'll start with P1 which is our core P router. So firstly I'm going to type MPLS IP. Then I'm going to specify a label distribution protocol. You can allocate labels manually, but that doesn't scale. It's kind of like doing static routes versus using OSPF or BGP. It makes more sense to use a label distribution protocol to automatically distribute labels. Then we go on to each interface on the router and type MPLS IP. So I'll do that on both interfaces of the core router. So show MPLS interfaces allows us to see that we've got MPLS enabled on two interfaces. We're using LDP or label distribution protocol on both interfaces, and that's currently operational. Show MPLS LDP neighbors. We don't currently have neighbor relationships. We need to enable MPLS on other routers. So I'll enable MPLS on P2 and then P3. Here's P2. So we do the same thing again, MPLS IP, MPLS label, protocol. LDP is the default, but I'll just specify it again so that you can see the commands. On gigabit 01, MPLS IP. So that's the interface to the core router Notice we have an LDP relationship to 1.1.1.1, which is the loopback of P1. P1 has a neighbor relationship to P2. So show MPLS LDP neighbor now displays information which it didn't previously. We can see that we have a neighbor relationship to this router from the local router. Notice the port number 646. That's a port number used for the TCP session between the routers. In this case, an ephemeral or random port number was used on router two to the well-known port number on router one. Discovery was done on this interface. We have this neighbor. Notice the IP addresses of the neighboring device. So on this side, do show IP interface brief we can see that those IP addresses are bound to the LDP peer. So we still need to enable MPLS on the link to PE1. I'll do something similar on PE3. So here's P1. At the moment, we only have one LDP neighbor. But once we've enabled MPLS here, we should see two neighbor relationships on P1. So interface gigabit 00, MPLS IP. I'll wait a second for the neighbor relationship to come up, and there you go. So you can see another neighbor relationship displays on P1. So show MPLS LDP neighbor. We've got a neighbor relationship to P2 and to P3. On this router, I'll enable MPLS on the link to PE2. Show MPLS LDP neighbor. We've got one neighbor relationship. So what I'll do now is configure PE1 and PE2, but we are only going to enable MPLS on gigabit 00. You don't enable MPLS on the links to customers you only enable MPLS on the links to the core network. So here's PE1, and while we're doing that, I'll show the output on P2. So show MPLS LDP neighbor. This router only has one neighbor relationship to P1, but MPLS IP, MPLS label, protocol LDP, Interface gigabit 00. Again, we are only going to enable 
MPLS to the core network. So gigabit 00, zero MPLS IP. So we should see a neighbor relationship come up and it has. So on P2, we now see two neighbor relationships, one to P1, one to PE1. And over here, show MPLS LDP neighbor, we see a single neighbor relationship to P2. So last one to configure is PE2. And while we're here, I'll show the output on P3. Currently, it only has one neighbor relationship. So conf t, MPLS IP, MPLS label, protocol, LDP, interface gigabit 00, zero MPLS IP, show MPLS LDP neighbor. We have one neighbor relationship on PE2, and now we have two neighbor relationships on P3. P3 has a neighbor relationship to P1, as well as to PE2. Notice it's really important that you configure loopbacks with a slash 32 mask on every router. So every router has a loopback configured with an IP address that's using a slash 32 mask. We've now configured MPLS on the core network. It's as simple as that to configure core MPLS. That in of itself doesn't give you a lot except a label switching. Originally, the idea was to use labels to do quicker forwarding of traffic from one interface to another. But with ASICs today, that's kind of negated. ASICs today can route at wire speed. So the big reason to use MPLS is layer three VPNs or layer two VPNs. But I'm gonna show you some show commands so that you can see how the label tables are now used in the MPLS environment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.